So it's a couple of days after Christmas, so Merry Christmas to those of you who celebrate that. And what better way to celebrate the holidays than to talk about UiPath API triggers. Let's get to it. So if you're familiar with UiPath Orchestrator, you're probably familiar with the concept of triggers being a way of running an automation based on some kind of condition. That condition could be time, it could be that that is data that needs to be processed in a queue, or it could be as a response to an external system needing an automation to be run. And that's where you want to use API triggers. Now, you've been able to run automation from external systems for a while using the Orchestrator API, but API triggers just make it so much easier to set up, to run, and to get a response from your automation. So that's what we're going to do today. Now, I'm not going to make this an hour long video because I could, because API triggers is quite extensive, but I'm going to show you how to get started, what you need to get set up and how to do some of the basic operations. So we'll try to keep this one short. So make sure you stay to the end and then you can explore stuff on your own. So here in Orchestrator, we have a couple of processes in my demos folder. If we click the processes tab, we can see that we have get customers and get customers delayed. Those are two automations. All they do is just get some customers from an Excel sheet that I have on my machine. And um, the get customers delayed just takes a little bit longer to do that. And there's a reason for that we'll get back to in a few minutes. So those are the two processes that we'll use. If we go to the triggers tab, we can see that we have time triggers, queue triggers, event triggers, and API triggers. And I'm not going to talk about the other trigger types in this video. We'll just talk about API triggers. So if we click the tab for that, we can see that I don't have any API triggers as of right now. So if we want to create a new trigger, we basically click the add a new trigger button over here. That will let us uh, type in a name. We'll just uh, call this one get customers and we'll select the uh, get customers process for that. And um, over here on the right, these are sort of the HTTP related properties um, that we need to select the verb or the method that we want to use could be uh, get, uh, post, put, or delete. You know, the basic CRUD operations for creating, reading, updating, and deleting stuff. As we're getting data in this, uh, this automation, we want to use the get verb. And then we have um, the slug down here. Basically, you want to type in some kind of identifier that will give us a unique URL for this API trigger. So I'll just... Uh, type in Yebus demo as our slug. If I then um, copy the full slug URL and go to Notepad and uh, paste it in, we can see that we get this long URL uh, for my tenant. And uh, this is the ID of the uh, uh, API trigger along with the slug that makes this URL uh, unique. So let's just uh, hold on to that for a, a few minutes. Let's jump back into Orchestrator. Then we need to select uh, the default call mode. And this is where it gets a little bit, if not tricky, but there's some things you need to know. As of right now, there are four different uh, call modes, asynchronous callback, asynchronous polling, asynchronous fire and forget, and then synchronous long polling. And I'm going to show you a couple of these in this video. I'll try to explain the others as well. But the first one we'll do is the synchronous long polling. A method. This is basically a way that when an application that wants to uh, run our, our automation or call our API trigger, it will issue a request towards our URL that we just pasted into Notepad, and then it'll just wait for that to respond and then get the response and then continue whatever it was doing. This is not always the way you want to do it. It's a good thing to use if you know that the response will be fairly quick. Um, and that can be other reasons uh, to use a synchronous uh, calling uh, mode. But generally, I'm not a big fan of that unless I know that the response is going to be very, very quick. Um, but let's try and do that here. So we have now the uh, synchronous long polling call mode set. We have the slug and the full URL pasted into Notepad. And then we have also set the verb here. So I'll just uh, click Add. Now, what you would do in order to call that is you would, of course, 
uh, use that URL that we pasted into Notepad. But let's uh, very quickly jump into Postman. Postman is a uh, website where you can uh, play with these kinds of things, uh, HTTP requests and stuff like that. And basically what I have here is an interface where I can issue an HTTP GET request against some URL. And we have the URL inside of Notepad. So let's uh, paste this into uh, the uh, text box here. So now if I click send here, it's going to send a request to that URL. And let's see what happens when I do that. Basically, it comes up with a 401 unauthorized result. That means we can't run our automation uh, without authorizing first. So in order to get authorized towards uh, our uh, API trigger, we need to set something up inside of Orchestrator. And it's very easy, so let's just jump into Orchestrator again. Inside of Orchestrator, you can set up what's called a personal access token. So I go up to my user here and I say uh, preferences. And in here, I have this personal access token uh, menu. And when I go in here, I can generate a new token. I'll just click that button. And I can just call the token test. And I can set it to expire within uh, or in 100 days. And then I need to select what resources do I want this token to grant me access to. And in my case, I want to use the Orchestrator API access. And I could then uh, select what kind of objects and methods inside of that whole uh, collection of stuff that I want to grant it access to. I'll just select all and click Save. What it does now is it gives us this token. And I want to copy that and paste it into my notepad also. So now we can see that we have this token called Tests. Uh, that expires on April 6th, 2025, and also that it grants us access to a bunch of different resources. So now, if we go back into Postman, what we can do is we can click the Headers uh, tab here below our request, and we can type in as the key, authorization. And then in the value, we can type in bearer, and then paste in the token. If I run this automation or send this request again, hopefully we should get a better or different result. So uh, let's try and click send. And we can see that it takes a few seconds. That's because hopefully right now the automation is running inside of Orchestrator. And, and we'll just let this finish and then we'll go, go into Orchestrator and check. What we can see is we got a, a 200 OK result back. That means that no problems whatsoever. And, and if we look into the uh, result down here, we can see that we got some customers back. And you know, this is a place of a pizzeria that I used to go to. Down here, we have another restaurant here in my local hometown. And down here, there's a Swedish uh, Thai restaurant that I also like to go to when I'm in Sweden. So basically, this returned uh, some data from our automation. And if we go into our uh, orchestrator again, and look in the jobs tab, we can see that uh, scroll over here, 45 seconds ago, this job called Get Customers was actually completed. So very simple, you set up a personal access token, you set up uh, an API trigger, and then you can run it. Now, what I said was, um, you know, we're running this in synchronous mode right now. That means that when you call the automation, um, you have to wait for it to complete before you get a response back. That means that your process that is calling the API trigger is blocked. It can't do anything else. It's sort of to compare it to something when you go to like a fast food restaurant, right? You go up to the counter, you order your food, and then you wait at the counter. That means you're not taking part of what's going on back at your table, any conversation or whatever's going on back there. You're not a part of that. You're blocked because you're waiting for your food. Now, if you used an asynchronous method of doing this, you would go to the counter, order your food, and go back to your table. And then, at least in some fast food restaurants, there are these uh, screens that will show you what orders are being processed. And when your order, you know, number 82 or whatever, is done, you can see it on the screen. And then you go up and you pick up the order and go back to the table. But you're not blocked for that entire waiting period. You just go order your food, come back to the table. When the order is done, you go and pick it up and now you're ready to eat. I don't know if that analogy is any good.
but I hope you understand. So let's try and set up um, an API trigger that uses an asynchronous calling method. So we go back to the triggers page here, go to API triggers, and we'll add a new trigger. And we'll get customers. And I'll just call it async. I will select the get customers delayed um, process because that will ensure that it takes, I think it's 60 seconds for this uh, automation to run. And we will still use the get verb. I will uh, create a new slug um, get customers slow. I'll copy that uh, full URL into my notepad just so we have it somewhere. We can see that this is now the same basic URL, but a different slug. So still it, it ensures some uniqueness. Go back into orchestrator and now we'll use the asynchronous polling call mode. What that means is when you call this um, API trigger, you will get a status back instantly and you'll get a status back saying that yes, I accept or the server accepts your request, but it doesn't give you the response. It doesn't give you the customers because in this case, it takes 60 seconds to retrieve those customers. What it also gives you is a URI or URL if you want uh, to a status page. And if you go to that status page, you can then see if the uh, request has been processed. So at some given interval, you will ask that status page, what is the status of the uh, automation that we started? And given that this will take a minute to, to process, hopefully I'll have time to show you, um, uh, you sort of the progression of the different states that we come through. Let's try and do it. So um, we have a async polling set here and we'll add the trigger. So now we have the uh, get customer slow and we have the unique URL for that right here. So we'll copy that into our clipboard, go back into uh, Postman, and we'll open a new tab here. I'll paste in the URL for the get customers slow API trigger. And then we'll need also to set the uh, uh, authorization token here. So I'll copy that from uh, my notepad. and paste it in to the value here. So what happens now is we call the method. If we go to our orchestrator, we should see the job running for a while. It hasn't started yet, so we'll have to wait just a second. But once we uh, send the request, we can then quickly go into our jobs page, see that the job is running, then go back into uh, Postman, and hopefully we can see or try to access that status page um, and see that um, it's in progress. I'll have to move <laughs> fairly quickly and speed is not my middle name, but but we'll try to, to get this working. So here we have our send um, request page for the get customers slow API trigger. We have the authorization um, trigger or authorization uh, header value set. So let's uh, click send. We get a 202 accepted here. If we go over to the jobs page, we can see that the job is running and that'll continue for about another 52 seconds or so from now. If we go back into Postman, we can also see if we look into the headers page here, we can see that we got this status uh, page location in this, uh, this property called location. And if I copy that, create a new tab, paste that in, and then, of course, in the headers, we also need to authenticate against um, against uh, this URL. So I will type in authorization, type in the bearer token, and hit send. We get a state back saying, uh, oh, I thought we were going to get a 303 back. We're getting, getting a 200 back saying OK, but we can also see that the state of this process is running. So let's just go into Orchestrator and wait for... It's already done? That's very quick. 
let's uh okay maybe just finished just now let's see what it says yeah nine seconds ago so if we go back into postman now and issue this same request one more time hopefully we should get something back that may still be 200 okay but then instead of running we should get something else and indeed we did we get a 200 okay back okay i thought we were going to get a 400 Anyways, what do I know about HTTP? Um, but what we get back is now the um, the data that we saw when we ran it in synchronous mode. So basically what we uh, have is the option of uh, of running an automation inside of Orchestrator from some other application. Of course, if you were inside the UiPath ecosystem, you would just use you know a method or an activity to run the automation. But since we are building an application an external application that would like to run the automation, we need to make use of HTTP and API triggers, a really effective way of doing that. Now, just to quickly touch on the other um, calling modes, if we go back into the jobs page and we go to triggers, API triggers, and we edit, let's say the first one here, we had the synchronous one that we used in the first demo, then we used asynchronous polling as the second one where we basically we, we fire the request and then at some interval, we, we come back and ask, okay, are you done yet? Are you done yet? Are you done yet? And we'll have to code that into the application that we're using this trigger from. Then there is the asynchronous fire and forget method. Basically, that's where you don't expect a result. You just want to start an automation. So you just issue the request and you get back a status saying that, yes, I did get the um, automation started, but you don't get a response you don't get the result or anything back when the automation has finished and you don't get any data back as we did in, in our uh, example here. And then there's asynchronous callback. This is not documented yet and I can't get it to work. But what it is basically is if you set, if you call uh, an API trigger, what you can do is you can define that when the automation is done running, it will issue an HTTP request towards a URL. And what you can do is you can enable it for either both successful runs or failed runs of the uh, of the process, or you can select only failed runs or only successful runs, or you can disable it altogether, but then there's no real reason for using it. Um, so if you set it for both success and failure, you will need to provide the URLs that it will issue a post to when it's done running. But I can't get this to work yet. There's no documentation on it but hopefully there will be soon. So if you like this video, make sure you give it a thumbs up. It really does make a big difference and subscribe to my channel, hit the notification bell, all of that. It really does help my channel if you do those things. Otherwise, you can see a couple of videos here and there and down here, I think there's a round thing where you can click to subscribe to my channel. I hope you enjoyed the video and I hope to see you in the next one.